you idiot. Now everyone sees it. You must hide your cheat. Bonjour. <laughs> Who knew? What a killer! <laughs> you reek, soldier. Have you even showered once yet? You smell bad. Mm I'm glad I found you. I see you're finally getting clean. The 5th Battalion thanks you. I came here to be alone. What was that today? It was incredible. I don't want to talk about it. Why not? I can't believe all this time you've been keeping your skill a secret. What else have you been hiding? Nothing. Leave me alone. Arjun, we started off on the wrong foot. Can we be friends? I'm not your friend. Very well. But you are my equal. We fight together against the same enemy. I will do all I can to protect the others. You can turn your back on me, but when the time comes, do not turn your back on them. Hello, and welcome to Book vs. Movie. This is a podcast where we read books that have been adapted into movies, and then we try to decide which we like better, the book or the movie. I am Margot P. of ColoniaBook.com, and this is my good friend and co-host, Margot D. of Brooklyn Fitchick. Hi, everyone. Margo D. of Brooklyn Fitchick, who has a book available for pre-sale right now. Yes, yes. If let's, you... just, let's just mention it right out of the top. I uh, just remembered. I'm it's super so exciting. It's very exciting. We have a pub date of October 14th. It's called Filmed in Brooklyn. It's on Amazon right now. We're, def- we're just finishing up what the cover is going to look like. But if you're interested, go to Amazon, look up Margo Donahue, and you will find Filmed in Brooklyn. You can pre-order a copy. This is for the U.S. I'm finding out about Kindle and Canada and other places. I, that's, that is to be determined. But yes, Margo, thank you very much for letting me mention that at the top. I'm sure it will be available on Kindle because mine... Mine is, and it's we're, we're with the same publisher. Right. Um, although I'll tell you, it took a little while. It wasn't available at first, but now it is. Okay. Um, so if you are new, yes. I mean, yes, Margot's book is exciting because it is about movies. <laughs> and um, this is a podcast about books and movies. This pandemic time over <laughs> over two years ago now, um, we decided to do a brand new episode every single week. And so in order to do that, we've had to kind of expand our um, idea of what a book is to include really any literary source. So, you know, is it a play? Is it a magazine article? Is it a short story, a novella, or an epic poem, as we're going to discuss today? We are constantly looking for new um, adaptations that we can talk about on this podcast. Maybe you have some ideas for some you'd like to share with us. Maybe you'd like to talk about the show with other listeners. There's a few places where you could do that on the internet. We do have a basic Facebook page. All the episodes are posted there. Be sure to like that if you're on Facebook. We're much more interactive in our Facebook group. In the group, we talk about books and movies. We talk about ideas for episodes coming up. You, It's really just a nice, safe space. We really just talk about books and movies there, which is a miracle on Facebook to be able to do that. We're on Twitter and Instagram. At those places, you spell out book versus and movie. Please follow us there if you have those social media accounts on your phone. And boy, that makes me sound like 100 years old if you have those social media accounts on your phone. Jeez. (laughs) 
We're recording this on Download a different day the and time. Download the Facebook app. <laughs> Go to your app store. <laughs> We're recording this on a different day and time. It just hit 89, Margo. Like, it was 60 the Ew, other day. Yuck. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. It's so hot. Anyway, we do have a basic old-timey email. What? Do you, I'm sorry. Book versus movie podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. And once again, as Margo said, whatever literary source you're thinking of, the movie that is being adapted, it needs to be something on a major streaming app so that we can be it's easy for us to get it but also for the audience to be able to watch it if it's on some rare you know streaming service and zurich or something like that or it's on a vhs copy about this book we're gonna that sponsor today by the way if it's on that just doesn't work for us so just keep that in mind in all those places we love suggestions and please feel free to reach out yeah, having it be accessible for everybody is really, really super important. Um, and fortunately, the literary source of today's episode, super easy to get your hands on for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about it in just a minute. But I, we just want to mention also, if you really enjoy the show and you would like to help keep us in books and movies, you can also support us on Patreon. We do have a Patreon page. We're putting all of the episodes up there from 2020 today and then previous to that so all of them are going up there we have almost 100 episodes there some are free because they're just much older we've been doing this for about eight years now but some of the recent ones we just put up there that are really cool from the last couple of years die hard hidden figures shrek and the sisterhood of the traveling pants those are just the ones we've done in the last few weeks you go to p-a-t-r-e-o-n i want to thank jesse for supporting us and Thank you so much for doing that. We really appreciate it. But also, if money is tight, we totally get that. If you could just leave us a review wherever you get the podcast on any app that you use, that would be amazing. Leave some stars, whatever. And as Margo mentioned just a moment ago, this episode is brought to you by Kensington's newest title, Unstable by Alexandra Ivey. And this is my jam because I like those spooky thrillers that have like a little bit of romance in them. This is set in a small town. It's about a couple that were together. They were married. Now they're divorced. They're in Pike, Wisconsin. And then there's these there's a serial killer that he's leaving bodies out and he's using old VHS tapes of people that thought they were disappeared, but now they're murdered. And now it's a whole thing. They have this, like you do like one does. <laughs> It's a Margo bit- loves this kind of book, by the I way. Really like this do. is so her jam. <laughs> I cobble this stuff up right away, and she's a great writer. I think she's been on the show. We've talked about her books in the past. Once again, that's called Unstable. It's Alexandra Ivy. It's from Kensington Books. And you can follow her on Twitter at Alexandra Ivy. And thank you, Kensington Books, for supporting our show. We really appreciate it. You can find Unstable by Alexandra Ivy wherever books are sold. Find out more at Kensingtonbooks.com. Now We are still kind of in the middle of AAPI um, History Month, and last week we talked about a great movie called Raise the Red Lantern. If you didn't hear last week's episode, please do go check it out. If you are unfamiliar with the work of the genius that is Gong Li, it's a great place to start. We're going to be talking about her today. Now, today, though, we're talking about a a, a movie... Here's something we should talk about, because a lot of people are going to be listening to this episode, I think, because it's a Disney movie, maybe because it's AAPI month, but we're going to be talking about the live action Mulan. Now, going into this, what we want you to know is that neither one of us had seen either version of this movie ever before. The original Mulan came out before I had kids, so I was not aware of it. And when this one came out, and we'll talk about the timing, you know, my kids were already too old for this kind of movie, Mm -hmm. so I was also unaware of it. So I hadn't seen it at all. People have real strong feelings about this movie. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. We did not. We were actually, <laughs> no. we, we, we were planning out our schedule we were like, well, for the month. Fun. <laughs> we're like, oh, Mulan's based on a poem. We could get a poem. That's easy. And we'll just talk about the live action version because that's the most recent. And as Margo's, I'd never seen it. I don't have kids, but I Nor know I. there's a generation, like there's my generation of the 70s and 80s that likes their Disney movies. And you might think they're silly or trite or not cool, but you're going to feel that way very passionate about your 90s movies and your Pocahontas and uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame and Mulan. I know they have their big, big fans. We both do. And we're not pooping on that. We totally understand it. We just wanted to do something a little different. We just talked about Gong Li. So that's why we wanted to talk about her 
now. And that so the story is based on that. And we understand, well, there's just a lot of passion for this topic of Mulan. Yes, which I totally, totally yes. get. American cinema is not as diverse as the American population. <laughs> right. And so, you know, all of the cultures that make up our society are not equally represented and not even represented in proportion to, you know, the population. So when, we, I, and again, I say this as a Mexican American who saw Coco in the movie theaters like eight times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how many times I've seen that movie. Um, you know, when you have a movie that represents your culture and it's like the first one or one of the few, you know, it has, it bears a burden that you're just never going to place on a Snow White or a Sleeping Beauty. Exactly. You know, it's just not going to happen. So there's that going in right from the get go. I knew that this movie was based on kind of like an ancient epic poem, but I had never read it myself. So we were saying like it's very easy to find different translations. But again, that's this is another thing. So the poem is written in another language. That means that the interpretation, I mean, the um, translation is a little bit open to interpretation. So you can find slightly different meanings of things depending on what translation you find. So we tried to get our hands on a few different translations. And we both kind of agreed. It's so funny. We both kind of independently agreed that the one we like the best. Right. It's from this YouTube channel called By the Book, which is different from the podcast By the Book. And we had Kristen Meinzer on the show. But we will, yeah, we were going to include that and we'll we'll include the poem. I just want to give just a little bit of background because this is how much we know about it. It's between the fourth to the sixth century AD. That's 200 years. They're not. It's a long time ago. Long time ago. And it's a big time space that it could have occurred. It's either in northern or southern dynasties. It's either the Ode to Mulan or Ballad of Mulan. There's all these different, like Margot said, there's interpretations. And we were doing a lot of research and a lot of, there's a lot of YouTube channels and and, uh, clips, episodes devoted to Mulan and how much, how important she is and what the adaptation was like for people in 2020 and we understand that this is like other than other disney princesses and we've talked about this when we did our month of disney last november you know th- there's sleeping beauty what does she do she sleeps i mean bell it's from- not that exciting no. it's not and and when we read we read cinderella we've you know we've read a lot of um source material disney you know does they that's this is their mo they take this source material and they disneyfy it they change they add characters they Mm -hmm. take characters away they mash characters together they'll change the setting they'll change the time period um they're not really uh in the business of historical accuracy (laughs) per se but just to kind of place it in in historical perspective we're talking about uh, the, the the poem i mean is taking place, or at least is written, around the end of the Roman Empire in the Western world. So that's how long ago we're talking about. Right. And and it's about an old war. So it's it's a it's a history piece even then. So this is it's a it's old. It's old. Yes. And the with the, the difference is, is that she's a she. She's a woman character and she is fighting in battle with men and she her family. So the, 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 there's this war that's happening and every ma- household has to give somebody up to fight. And it's meant to be the oldest male child. And the, her yes. family doesn't have one. And we should say also, like, this is not I mean, I. <sighs> I know a little bit about Chinese history. We talked about this last time. I know a little bit about Chinese history, mostly from art history. I am not, we're not experts. No. There's a lot that we're ignorant about here. Just, we're not claiming to be historians of of Chinese, you know, even Asian, you know, history at large. So, but my understanding is that the place, the time and place setting of this is a pre, I believe, a pre-imperial China, China, Mm -hmm. you know, it's in the northern part of what I think is modern day Mongolia, I think. That would make Um, sense, actually. And they, the belief is that she's of this, uh, she comes from this culture 
I think it's called the Jing Bang, who, uh, and forgive me, <laughs> sorry, we're going to mess up so many things in this episode, y'all, just please know. She's, to her culture is what eventually, I think, eventually becomes Mongolian culture. So she's not like a Han Chinese, uh, which is very much the, what the Disney version is. Uh, so it's not, it's not that. So already we're we're playing fast and loose with history and geography here because i mean this is a this is a huge area of land that we're talking about you right. know it's it's like canada versus guatemala mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's like that different but disney kind of doesn't care about crap like that they just they're like you know no. that's kind of they're like well it's just over there <laughs> Well, the story of Mulan is that she's this very brave warrior and it just comes mm-hmm. instinctually to her. It's so good. It's wonderful. And it's mm-hmm. she has no superpowers. There's no mysticism. There's no chi. No. There's she's no just witchcraft. smart. Yeah. And brave. And agile. And she's and she mm-hmm. and her father is injured and he's old and her she has a younger brother, I believe, in the story. And she they they're they're picking every man and her dad's like, Okay, I'll go fight and she really like she's like, No, that's a terrible idea. And in the middle of the night she takes a horse, she takes his armor, she takes a sword, and she goes. Yeah, there's this really cool section of the poem, and it's in the, the version that Margo's talking about, where Mulan goes to the east and she gets a horse and she goes to the west and she gets a sword and she goes to the north and she gets a shield and she goes to so she's traveling all over and she's getting these you know the the best things from every region um that she needs to really arm herself because again she's super smart she's super clever there are I will say there are some a, a some really good analysis for the lay person about like why Mulan isn't Chinese and what's wrong with this Disney uh, depiction. We'll put those in the Facebook group for those of you who belong to the Facebook group and they're, they're really interesting and, and mm-hmm. I encourage you to watch them. But, um, but the poem is really beautiful. I loved that whole segment where she's going here to get this and she's going there to get that. And, um, but there's not this element of like, I've dishonored my family no. by running away and pretending to be a man or by not being a woman and getting married. Um, she just is like, this is a terrible idea to send my old man. First of all, he's not going to help anybody. And if anything, he's going to be a burden to the army. Right. I'll go. Somebody needs to go. I will go. Let's do this. Why don't we play it right now? Awesome. Okay. So we'll play that clip. You with the English translation. Last night, I saw the draft posters. The Khan is calling many troops. The army list is in 12 scrolls. On each scroll, there's father's name. Father has no grown-up son. Mulan has no elder brother. I want to buy a saddle and horse and serve in the army in father's place. In the east market, she buys a spirited horse. In the west market, she buys a saddle. In the South Market, she buys a bridle. In the North Market, she buys a long whip. At dawn, she takes leave of father and mother. In the evening camps on the Yellow River's bank. She doesn't hear the sound of father and mother calling. She only hears the Yellow River's flowing water cry jian jian. At dawn, she takes leave of the Yellow River. In the evening, she arrives at Black Mountain. She doesn't hear the sound of father and mother calling. She only hears Mount Yan's nomad horses cry jiu jiu. She goes 10,000 miles on the business of war. She crosses passes and mountains like flying. Northern gusts carry the rattle of army pots. Chilly light shines on iron armor. Generals die in a hundred battles. Stout soldiers return after 10 years. On her return, she sees the son of heaven. The Son of Heaven sits in the splendid hall. He gives out promotions in twelve ranks and prizes of a hundred thousand and more. The Khan asks her what she desires. Mulan has no use for a minister's post. I wish to ride a swift mount to take me back to my home. When father and mother hear daughter is coming, they go outside the wall to meet her, leaning on each other. When elder sister hears younger sister is coming, She fixes her rouge, facing the door. When little brother hears elder sister is coming, he whets the knife, quick, quick, for pig and sheep. I open the door to my east chamber. 
I sit on my couch in the west room. I take off my wartime gown and put on my old-time clothes. Facing the window, she fixes her cloud-like hair. Hanging up a mirror, she dabs on yellow flower powder. She goes out the door and sees her comrades. Her comrades are all amazed and perplexed. Traveling together for 12 years, they didn't know Mulan was a girl. And in this clip at the very end, they go back, they start in English, they start in Cantonese, they go into English, and they end in Cantonese. They miss a part of the poem that I super like, which is at the very, very end when she's home. Her comrades find out, she was there for 10 years, by the way. She's in- Yeah, it's not a short war. No. It's quite, it's quite a while she's living among these men. It's not a season. She's there for many, many years, and nobody knew she was a woman. So when the, her comrades, the, this is the poem- Her comrades are all amazed and perplexed. Traveling together for 12 years, they didn't know Mulan was a girl. The he hare's feet go hop and skip. The she hare's eyes are muddled and fuddled. Two hares running side by side, close to the ground. How can they tell if I am he or she? That's which is, I just love In other words, uh, we were busy. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> we were busy fighting a war. Who cares? Who cares um, if you can fight? It's great. Right? Yeah. I really loved it. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what it reminded me of. And one of the things I really loved about it is, you know, she's she's brave. She's smart. She's not Wonder Woman where she comes from a magical island and yada, yada. Um, she is an ordinary girl who decides to do this and, and succeeds. And at the end, when she reveals herself to the people that she fought against, their reaction is not like, she's a witch, like in the movie. Mm -hmm. Their reaction is, oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. What do you know? It reminded me, like when I was in my teens, we took a a vacation in um, Portugal and we stayed in a monastery or a former monastery and it was named after some saint or other. And this saint, I'm putting finger quotes, this saint, was um, a monk who had lived in the monastery and had lived in and, you know, served in the monastery among them the, with all the other monks for years and years and years and years. And only when the monk died did they discover that the monk was a woman. This monk that had been living with them this whole time was a woman. So rather than have the reaction that they have in the Mulan ballad, which is like, oh, wow, there was like, there was a moment of like, Either we admit that we let a witch into our monastery. Right. <laughs> or, you know, obviously no ordinary woman could have done this. So obviously she must be a saint. She must be some superhuman sent from God. And that explains why she was able to live among men, you know, her betters for so long. I really loved that. The I was kind of waiting to see how it was going to end. Like, are they going to find out what's going to happen? What's their reaction going to be? And their reaction is just so respectful and um, grateful. It's it's so it's a great poem. It's, Why do neither of the movies end this way? I <laughs> really they really kind of don't. <laughs> no, and she's this huge hero and she's a folk hero and she's one of the few women heroes that are fighting in battle and she's very important to the culture. Yeah. In one of the YouTube clips I saw, um it was a person who grew up in, in Hong Kong and he said he and his schoolmates went to see a Disney movie and they didn't realize it was going to be Mulan. It was in the late nineties. Oh. And so he, but he said the kids freaked out because this was a story like their grandparents talked about. It was an opera. It's many TV shows in Asia. It's many it's, movies. It's sort of like Joan of Arc. Only mm-hmm. we all know what happened to her when they found yeah. out. Right. Right. Yeah. It's that's their it's their folklore. It's their it's a folk hero of of theirs. And so it was very, very important to them when this was being passed on to be adapted. As we said, we we are talking about a Disney version, like we'll probably maybe, you know, when we do another Disney month later in the year, maybe we'll go really deeper into a Mulan episode because we can go back into that. But it does very well i mean it's very popular like i said it just wasn't the animated one you the animated one i'm talking about 1998 excuse me yeah i mean and 
Disney, there's a lot of things. You look at that and there's people like Miguel Ferrer and Marnie Nixon. And there's not a lot of Asian people in that cast. I uh, know. <laughs> or behind the scenes or in the voices. Yeah. So, or advising or anything. advising anything. Yeah. So, you, and you, so people do make that criticism. We're, we're it's gonna... a very Epcot Center. Yes. Uh, China. Yeah. Yes. And it's very popular. So Disney wanted to make a live action version they're starting to do that this is before they have the streaming channel they this is like over 10 years ago they started working on this and it's like who do you find to write it who do you find to put it and it takes a dozen years to put together a disney movie even today it, there's just a lot of work involved and they really do do their research it's just that they change it to make things the way disney yeah. wants to be there's no cursing That's right. there's no I, you know, sexual p- picadillos being done or anything. It's a Disney movie. There's that is their brand, but they're there. So it's about 2015 and they're looking for an Asian director. And there's, you know, we've talked about there's, there's many that you could choose from. And I understand like it's Nikki Caro who they choose to be the director here. And it's like, well, is this, it's not just an Asian story. It's a woman's, it's a female story. And she's a brilliant cinematographer, director, artist. But what happens then in China, and look, I'm not an expert on international politics, on indigenous communities, on Muslim communities around the world and how they're treated. But there's there's really, there's internment camps being created in China for Muslims. And it started about 2017. Mm -hmm. I was looking at BBC. And in other words, right when this movie was in production. Was in pre-production. Yes. And Xinjiang is one of the bigger spots. And there's, there's, I was looking at a BBC News clip, and I was like, there's some of them have like 11,000 people in them. It, and it, it was terrible. It's terrible. It is terrible. It is, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's like, how much do we know about China? How much do we know? Like, you know, what news can we trust? Uh, they're doing a lot of things with satellites and looking down at the ground. And there's this happening, and it's awful and it's terrible and it's a blight. Of, you know, and then the Asian community doesn't want this, but it's this. It was this fight against terrorism. I'm making air quotes on my own here. And this is what was thought to, and they're they're calling them schools and they're being re-educated, which is always a terrifying notion to me. I don't think that ever really just goes very well, but that's what's happening in Xinjiang, in China, in, you know, where they're, when they're pre-producing this movie and they're putting it together and they're like, they're going to, as I said in the Disney version, it's <laughs> you have Eddie Murphy, and like I said, you have all kinds of right. And so here they're like, well, let's. What if we have an Asian cast? We have the best Asian actors we can Which find. Which is ridiculous that that's like so groundbreaking in tw- in the twenty first century. But yes. there we are. It that's that's the world that we live in, and we do. It, it's uh, I was just like. I'm just trying to get her. Yeah. Y- Yifei Liu. Uh, there's Donnie Yen, J- Jason Scott Lee, Gong Lee, Jet Lee. There, it's a really fantastic cast and they get this woman to direct it. And then there's this thing that she's from New Zealand and she did a movie called Whale Rider. Do you remember that? That was that was her film. And I do. Yeah, it's excellent. It, was, it is excellent. It's, it's very good. And it's also about dig- indigenous communities and a large. Right. There's so they film it, it, it. Disney films part of it in China and part of it in New Zealand. And so then there's this whole thing of like, well, how much was filmed in Xinjiang? Because at the credits, they're like, thank you, China, for being so great. And let us film there. And there's all these human rights problems. And it wasn't a good look. <laughs> no. Disney's had some stumbles in the last few years. I, I, and and there was an outcry of, you know, Disney, you've got to, and they were like, well, that's the, that's traditionally what you do. You thank the place where sure. you, you know, which is true. Yes. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think you want to be like, well, thanks Auschwitz for hosting. Yeah. I mean, really? And when there's such an outcry for people, uh, such prominent people, Asking Disney to say something, not asking them to pull the plug on the production, not asking them to shelve the movie, just say something. Yes. They're not awesome at that. No. And this is 
China is a huge audience for movies, by the way. If your film cannot play in China, you've got a problem. That, I mean, so this was also part of, you know, it's they're making money here. They're, this is their new audience. They want to appeal to the new audience. And so what do you do? Let's play the trailer. Why don't we play this? Let's play the trailer. Because there's also things going on in the world in 2020 I don't know if you've heard about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for those of you who may want to forget about that awful awful year yeah let's play the trailer all right we'll take a quick break and we'll play the trailer and we'll go right back into it do you know why the phoenix sits on the right hand of the emperor she is his guardian his protector that she's both beautiful and strong your job is to bring honor to the family. Do you think you can do that? Citizens, we are under attack from northern invaders. Their leader calls himself Bori Khan. Fights alongside a witch. No survivors. By edict of his imperial majesty, Every family must contribute one man to fight. Have you no son? I am blessed with two daughters. I will fight. We must be strong. This time he will not return. It is my duty to protect my family. Ancestors, please protect her. What is your name, soldier? Hua Jun, commander, son of Hua Zhou. We're going to make men out of every single one of you. is evident but something holds you back when they find out who you are they will show you no mercy I'm Hua Mulan I will bring honor to us all This film is formally released March 9th, 2020, <laughs> which uh, we have to remember that. I mean, was this like five days before we all packed up our desks yeah. and went home? Yeah. Something like that? For a couple of weeks, we thought, or maybe yeah. a couple of months tops. Yep. This, the movie, there's no audience. There's crickets. Like, what can you do? Nobody's allowed outside. It, we're, we're, we're. Uh, microwaving our mail. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> like I got wiping I, down our groceries. I still have like boxes bleach. of gloves, like because I just bought oh yeah, a bunch of gloves like Me to too. handle things because like Me groceries too. and stuff yep. like that. That's part of what's happening here too. And then the movie is that so Disney makes this also this decision, and they put a lot of money into it for sure over. 12 years, I'm Clearly. sure. Clearly. Yes. Yes. And it, it's yeah. on the, a lot of it's on the screen. It's a beautiful yeah. looking film. But, we will talk about that, but yes. Yeah. But the box office wasn't great because people were locking up, you know, and starting people in were China, scared of by dying. the way. Yes. <laughs> so we didn't go to the movies. No. So much. No. And we were, so we're home and we're told to stay home and we do stay home. And then Disney Plus had just released maybe a year before the, the streaming service. And so that was really new. It's very, it was, it's yeah. very new. It's still pretty new, you know. Um, so it was a weird time to have a huge movie coming out. You know, it was a weird time for a lot of things. You know, <laughs> it was a weird time to own a restaurant. It was a weird time yes. to, you know, be a teacher. It was a weird time for you know. This is one of those things that, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I think a lot of the 
stink on this movie mm-hmm. is to do with the very poor timing. I mean, both in, in terms of the shooting schedule mm-hmm. um, and location, as we just discussed. And um, and then, of course, you know, March 9th, 2020. I mean, really? It comes about March 9th. So nobody's going to the movie theater. And we we, we started going weekly then because we were just like, we got to do something. We <laughs> And there, the movie does get a release date of September 4th. And Disney said, fine, we'll release it on streaming. But it's twenty nine ninety nine, even if you have a subscription. Which, on the one hand, sure, most people are going to watch it with their entire family. So that's not... Too bad. It's still cheaper than going to a movie theater sure. if you got three kids. Okay. Right. I think it's a shame because this is, I think, a beautiful looking film. It's I would such love a to movie that's for yes. a theater and a big screen. I uh, when you watch it, you can't I mean, you and I both watched it streaming. Yes. And you yeah, you can't help but think like, oh man, on the big screen, this had to have been just I breathtaking. Sure the sound, yeah. The the Yeah, the, the sound is really good. I mean it's I know. really it's a top notch production. It I mean it is. I'm sorry to say <laughs> yes, but it is. It's true. <laughs> and I know there are problems. There yes. are problems. I have mixed feelings about this movie. I kind of don't know how to feel about this movie. Mm-hmm. But again, and and it, and a live action movie. This is the other thing: is a live action movie is not a cartoon. A live action movie just brings a different level of expectation. Um, you know, it has more responsibility. We don't have talking dragons that are funny in there mm-hmm. to crack us up, right? So. I can't. In some ways, it's darker, but in other ways, it's not. It's a it's a big ask. It's a big it's a big lift they're trying to do here with this movie. And I you know, OK, Disney, like you're not there's a lot of things we know. It's a broad brush mm-hmm. no matter what with Disney. You know, like when we were talking, when we could do, we've done we've talked about a lot of Disney movies. Like when we talk about bed knobs and broomsticks. I mm-hmm. mean, talk about Nazis like the Nazis in bed knobs and broomsticks are, you know, they're bumbling Laughable. Hogan's heroes kind of Nazis. Um, again, Coco. Mm-hmm. my people never had ourselves represented in that way and i mean i was i just burst into tears right. when coco started but there are things in there that are totally wrong or totally you know being presented for the, in the wrong way or you know they're mashing things together that don't go together it's all kind of, we could be here all day pointing out you know the the idiosyncrasies and 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 problems with coco but so there's just going to be that. There's just going to be an element of, of of that, and so I I get it, and I can totally see. And yes, if you if this if it were my culture, you know, like again watching Coco, I there I still had moments the whole time where I was like, really, no, but that's not. But you know what? Mm-hmm. There it is on the screen, and all kinds of people went to see it, and they didn't care that it was a quote unquote Mexican movie. And had it not been March 9th, twenty. We don't know. Like, there's no way to go back in time. But had it not been what was going on, had it not been the human rights scandal, um, it's hard to say what the reception would be. But here we are. That is what happened. It came out March 9th, 2020. It was filmed amid this huge human rights uh, controversy and, yeah. and tragedy. You know, it's kind of just always going to be forever stained with that. And and that's unfortunate because I do think there's a lot of stuff to really like about this movie. I forgot to mention this. There's another thing is that our actress, our lead, uh, Yifei Lu, she – so Hong Kong has been – I remember – you and I remember Tiananmen Square. Like what a – Yes. We were old enough to remember that what a yeah. big deal was. Hong Kong has had issues of the police – you know, clamping down on people, clamping down on protests, clamping down on speech, media. And she basically says, I love cops and I don't care if it gets me beaten, <laughs> which is yeah, not a great look. She's, mm. I think she's beautiful and she's perfect as our she's Mulan. She's a great job. She is, she's interesting. She's stunning. She like has, she's expressive. She's athletic. I think she's rich. She's from China originally. She lived in New York for a while. She's wonderful. She's just, she's a wonderful presence, but I get it. Like there's that stain that's on top of it. And it's annoying when 
you want to enjoy a thing and you don't want to think about the politics of the person. It, sometimes yeah. it's hard. And especially when it comes to human rights and it comes to people yeah. being abused. So I, I don't want to let that go because a lot of people do mention that when this movie comes out. I think it, she's excellent but it's i loved the beat you know some people are like oh that that part when she's a little kid and she has magic powers and she's kind of flipping around and doing things i think it's adorable there are people who are just like i, I think know, that's dumb and i'm like is. i think it's cute it <laughs> it's, is it's not the it's, again it's not the poem in no. the poem she is merely a very smart brave young woman and that should be enough yeah it should be enough but it's disney mm-hmm. so you know Sleeping Beauty's talking to birds. Yes. And they're talking back, you know. It's it's Disney. So we have to kind of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moments where you're like, it's Disney, you know. for Yeah, it's in the wrong part. It's in the wrong part of Asia altogether. Right. Sure. It's in the wrong era. Okay. <laughs> you know, she's got magic powers. She's not just a regular woman who is talented and brave and strong. Fine. It's Disney. She has chi. Um, she has this magic chi. She has this magic chi, which everybody has, mm-hmm. but, um, so we have all these things and, 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 and then also too, the other thing that we haven't discussed, the other additional layer of burden on this movie is we are talking about a post me too era. Right. Um, which if we look at the animated, um, uh, Mulan, which again, I haven't seen. I've only, I saw I've only it read last night announcement. So you saw. Time. We'll talk about that in a yeah. minute. Because we wanted to do it this way, where where Margot D watched the animated and I did not. So I'm right. looking at this movie as it's on its own, completely on its own. So we just kind of wanted to see how that would go. Mm-hmm. But um, so there's that as well. So you know, there's this whole kind of little feminist attempt on Disney's part of like. She has this light, but she has to suppress it because she's a girl and um, and she's going to be ostracized. And what happens when they ostracize you and they call you a witch? Well, then you become a witch. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, it's trying to do a lot. But again, I mean, <laughs> I'm going back and forth again. I don't know how to feel about this movie because there's stuff I like. I thought the sound was good. Ugh. Costumes are amazing. Uh, the, the art direction is spectacular. There's comic it's, relief, like with her. It's got comic moments somehow. In, in the, it's amazingly. Yeah, and there is some like I like to say because so she has to like and like you were talking about. She has to kind of keep her femininity down. Like that's the thing. So there's like she's always kind of so she bandages her breasts. She has this like leather plate around her chest, which saves her, by the way, because it's something her father gives her. But she like she can't bathe with the rest of them. She can't. There's certain things she can't do. And so she can be just so close to them, but then has to like keep to herself. And so there's this other person that she's kind of like attracted to that. And in the Disney version, he's going to be her boyfriend. That's what we want. And that's what, you know, spoiler, that's what you get. And I actually did get excited when I saw that. But it's, yeah, it's None fun. of this is in the poem. Right. None of it. None but, of it. you know, it's Disney. Right. <laughs> and there is the scene where she's she's bathing. And then there's the other. So there is sort of like. Uh, a homoerotic, you almost could say. There's sort of like a sexual tension. Which, again, is really edgy for Disney. Very, very edgy for Disney because you don't see anything. They never kiss. I mean, all spoilers, but there, none of this ever happens. It's only- But they have a chemistry and a chemistry yes. in which the 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 uh, cis male mm-hmm. is or suppose. Yeah, he he is having feelings for a fellow who he thinks male is is a male soldier um who reports to him yeah yeah so we should yeah. say gong lee is is zhang zhang and, oh, oh i love god she's so great i just love her so <laughs> much she, we, we talked about her last week and and it's a that is it raise the red lantern raising the red lantern raise the red lantern raise the yeah. red lantern and she plays Jing zhang and so she is this they don't have this in the poem either, no. and I don't think they have this in the Disney version, but she's like this shapeshifter, and so she's like a phoenix, and then she's an eagle, and she's a this and a that. She's a witch. Witch. She's a witch. And she, like Mulan in the movie, was a little girl who had a lot of chi and couldn't suppress who she really was, and because of that, her society totally kicked her out, and now she's a witch. You're a witch, am I? A 
your cheek. Jun did die. For a lie can only live so long. But Mulan. Mulan lived. And she reports to a very powerful male who's who's going after our Mulan because Mulan is advancing. And she's the one that can kind of tell like, oh, there's something up with you. You're not really you're not like the others. There's some, you're, you're a girl, aren't you? You're a female. They do have these moments, but she's only treated like an equal by this mean guy. And that's why she kind of takes on this role with him because everywhere else people just treat her in a demeaning fashion or they don't respect yes, her Yes, he power. wants to use the, the baddie. Yes. Um, wants to use the witch to use her power to get power for himself. And I have to say, I, I really liked, I don't know, I just, I, I can't tell you why. I can't explain why, but I really liked, because Disney has a lot of witches, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot, you know, we got a lot of Disney has a long tradition of evil witches, powerful women who are ostracized and get it in the end. In this case, we have a quote unquote witch who is with the bad guy only because he's the only one that isn't kicking her out into the cold. She ultimately isn't a bad person. She's just a powerful person. Yes. And he respects yeah. her. That's Jason Scott Lee as Bori Khan. He's so good. He's so good in he that role. He played Bruce Lee. He's a great baddie. Do you remember like a mm-hmm. Bruce Lee? We played Bruce Lee back in the day. He's she, great. He is. And so she, and he's very powerful and scary in this movie, but she's with him because he respects her. Nobody else would. Mm-hmm. What is she going to do with her superpowers? And she likes Mulan and she, but it's not, you know, it's all business for her though. And, but then yeah. they do have this respect for another. I think this movie, there's a scene where there's, you know, she, she causes an avalanche to happen and the snow happens. It's so exciting. It's I would love to see that in movie theater because I know it's it had to be thrilling. It's yeah. honestly like 
gobsmacking, beautiful. She rises out of it with her horse. And I love horses. And she just, and she, and there's a lot of great horse, uh, horse trickery going on in this movie. It's real good. And she comes out of that. And then eventually people realize like she's shunned, but then they bring her back because she's powerful. But Mulan just like her, when she really hits her essence and she just embraces it and lets everybody see it, 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 she becomes the most powerful one there. And it's spectacular to see. And she learns all kinds of lessons and she loses the sword and she has to fight against Jason Scott Lee, you know, and spoiler she in the end she comes home and that's what by the way that's the whole thing about Mulan she just wanted to go home she didn't want to fight forever she wanted to be in the yeah she missed yeah. her family in the, in the other one she goes I mean in the poem she goes home as well but most of the stuff that we just talked about is not in the poem at all right um, right <laughs> yeah, what you heard and, that was um, it <laughs> you know it's it's just um, you have to kind of div- there's a lot you have to be willing to kind of put out of your mind as you're watching this movie um Least of all, the fact that, um, you know, in the beginning with her parents, like the, the, I can't remember what's the name of the actress. She's in Joy Luck Club, the one that plays Mulan's mom. Yes. She's 64 years old. Rosalind Chow. <laughs> yeah. With this little girl. <laughs> yeah. Just, she reportedly, I guess she had it like in her 50s. <laughs> There's yeah, there's some Asian Ameri- Asian excuse me Asian actors that have been in many many things. I think you just yeah. kind of like you there, try to. It's a you just they're yes. great though. She's great. That, I buy it. I buy that she, that's her mom. I, I buy love, that that's her dad. I love the matchmaking stuff in the beginning. The match, it's great. It's really good. It's cute. It's one of the. It's you know it's a lighter moment, and the you know and the other thing you have to remember too in terms of like putting all of the expectations. Like I said, there's a lot of expectations just because it's a live action film, let alone that it's, you know, a rare representation of a not white um, family in American cinema uh, for kids. And um, the movie, you know, it's about a war. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fighting and a lot of killing, but there's not a lot of blood. Like it's scary, but it's not so, so scary that, you know, it's for kids. So, yes, there's combat. Yes, there's killing. But it's, you know, it is in a in a contained kind of Disney sort of a way. Is it PG-13? Um, no, I, it might be. Nobody's yeah. being disemboweled. No, <laughs> you know? no, no, no. It's, it's a very clean war. <laughs> yeah, you don't see any blood. There's no, no. D- really gruesome stuff that, that that's kept to a minimum. Uh, but it is intense. I mean, I think for little kids, this would be very it is scary. Intense. Yeah. Yes, There's also yes. no singing. I just It just hits me. like No, and I'm none. assuming there must be, I, I'm, you know, and again, I'm watching it not having seen the animated one. I'm sure I'm missing all kinds of little nods and Easter eggs and things to the animated version that's going on in this movie whatever i don't care <laughs> but <laughs> say, um, a i mean it, yeah anytime gong li shows up i'm just yeah. like my my chin on both my fists <laughs> and i'm just like waiting to see what she's gonna do this time i just love that her woman. costumes are fantastic the costumes are amazing but in the end spoiler but she turns out she's snape yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she sacrifices herself. She turns into an eagle or, or some kind of a, a different kind of bird and takes the, there's a lot of arrow shooting in this. And it's, she takes the arrow and she, and then Mulan holds her in her arms. And that, that's sort of this, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful moment. It, it's, I don't know what to say. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was beautiful. I, I, I was entertained. Yeah. I was, I, um, I get all the problems with it, too. I know. I totally do, too. I completely get all the problems. There are problems. There are real problems. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted about this movie. I I mean, yeah, there's some really good stuff there. Yeah. I I wish that Disney had the balls to say, like, human rights violations are bad. Yeah. Like, you know, Florida. Uh, Yeah. Well, Um, there's been quite a few missteps from Disney yeah. in the last couple of years. I'm trying to think, like, I'm trying to start, sorry, it's, um, it was nominated for Best Costume Design. The costumes And visual effects, and they're, yeah, they're both spectacular. They're brilliant. Yeah. Um, the performances are good. The writing, 
it's a little clunky, you know, it's a lot of honor and dishonor and Mm -hmm. uh, very broad strokes, very, very broad strokes. But so is everything in Disney. I mean, that's that's just how it is. That's what they do. There's, it's, yeah. it's really big themes that they're going for. I was just, I just saw it. It won the Costume Designer Guild Award. So and it deserved that because just for Gong Lee's outfit oh was gosh, like. They were so beautiful. The oh, costumes were so pretty. They, I kept stopping and like looking at all the oh, detail yeah. and all the costumes. Yeah. The, the visual effects. I mean, and it's funny because they said, well, they didn't film everything in Jing Jing. They were, you know, there was like only like 18 times they filmed in China. The rest was in New Zealand. Like 18 is kind of a lot. To That's be. kind of a lot. <laughs> That's not. Not for nothing, but but mm-hmm. it is beautiful. I mean, the 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 ba- the, the locations are spectacular. It's gorgeous. It's got it's gorgeous. some light moments to it that are funny. Like I said, her crew, the guys that she hangs out with, that she's friends with. When when they sweep over the Forbidden City and it's oh. all like all the people and all the co- oh. it's it's they there's a lot of work in this. There's a lot mm-hmm. of time. There's they, there's mm-hmm. a lot of money spent to make it. It looks spectacular Mm -hmm. and it's the sound is great the music is good i know i know they don't have all the songs and that's like i was saying i so i watched it late last night so i've only seen it once but there's one time where the grandmother is singing and all of a sudden it's marty nixon which is like can you get any that was cinderella's voice was it not i mean she's like (laughs) oh just get marnie yeah just get marnie but yeah she's right over there just get just grab her (laughs) i I, but i get it like there's people who say yeah like what you were talking about with coco they got a really good example of like they're just taking a little bit of everything and it's like how many people work on a movie like a couple of thousand but especially at the the all oh, the, the creative details it's a couple of dozen people and everybody's gonna have their ideas and everybody wants to get something in and you only have two hours you know like to get it so yeah and that's kind of long you yeah. know for a kid's movie but you know it, it's action-packed of course um, you know, I think the pacing of it is good. The the moments of levity that there are, right? Um, and yet it takes it. It's it's taking the, you know, the subject matter of hiding who she is versus being who she is. You know, it's taking that seriously. I wonder, like, if we it's weren't in a pandemic, what would have happened with this? I, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say because this is all still, like you said, human rights abuses are happening there, and it's terrible. And we're, you know. A couple of liberal women that, of course, <laughs> we we hate that. I just feel like I know, and I just feel like, and this is this is a, um, maybe I shouldn't say this. This is a really dumb analogy, and I'm realizing that it's very dumb. No, but but look, look, everything is made in China. Like in yeah. the United States, everything. Like I'm looking at my desk. Almost everything I'm looking at was probably made in China, including this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this computer I'm looking at, our government officials on both sides of the aisle are able to condemn human rights violations. Uh, I feel like, you know, they, they're somehow managed to walk that line of like negotiating these trade agreements and also, you know, at right. least playing lip service to uh, human rights violations bad. Um I don't understand the Disney reluctance, you know, it's odd to me, but uh, they're used to just being Disney and being that being enough. It's true. This is true. This is true. Um, Yeah, I know. I am watching this Florida thing with great interest. Again, being from a Southern Cal, being from Southern California, Mm -hmm. where, you know, Anaheim is just over an hour from here. Um, Yeah. Hmm. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So book versus movie. <laughs> oh, book. I mean, I, I mean, I like the movie, but I was really moved by the poem. I mean, I, again, we listened to different versions of right. it, and each one had a kind of a new, fun little nuance to it. Um, I had never really heard it before. I was really unfamiliar with it. I can totally get why she would become this big cultural figure. Yes. Of course she would. Um I really enjoyed learning about this epic poem. And and it's very evocative. For being so short, it, mm-hmm. it really paints such a beautiful picture. I mean, you really can see her riding into battle and gathering this and gathering that and and um her kind of pragmatic her pragmatism about the whole thing. 
she's not torn up inside hiding who she is and all of that. She's just she's doing her duty and she's being a soldier and that is who she is. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. She's, and she's looking out for her dad. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. There's all kinds of st- I always used to think of um I was trying to find a clip and somebody'll probably find it really easily and make me look like a fool, but I was trying to find the Margaret Cho clip where Margaret Cho oh, yeah, had Mulan! A- Mulan! <laughs> <laughs> mother like yelling for her. I was looking for that. She has Margaret Cho is great, by the way. I was looking at a bunch of her clips. I'm like, she is hilarious. Who is Korean? Let's be clear. And she's Korean, <laughs> she's by Korean the way. Descent. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> so, yeah. Movie. But anyway, it, yeah, th- yeah I, I'm glad we looked at it again. If nothing else for to learn about this amazing epic poem in this um, incredible cultural uh, figure that I was completely ignorant of. Yeah, same. Really fun to learn about that. And just I, me I on totally get it. IMDb saying hey, to you like, hey, it's a poem. Let's just do it. And you're like, cool. But we could do <laughs> what we're going to do next. So we had more time for it. Yeah, because here's the thing, y'all. You know, we're doing an episode every single week that doesn't. We, we're doing Joy Luck Club next. Yes, which is not a short book. No. It's not something we can do. We can't do a Joy Luck Club every week. We would love to. We cannot. But we're going to do we're going to do Joy Luck Club next week. I love we have this little con- continuity of raise the red lantern with Gong Li, and then Gong Li was in this, mm-hmm. and then um, what's your name? I just Ming Na Wen. Second ago, or no, uh, Rosalind Chow. The one who Chow. plays the mom. Yes, Rosalind Chow um, in Mulan, and now Rosalind Chow is going to be in Joy Luck Club. And I haven't seen Joy Luck Club since it came out, or I haven't read it since it came out either. So I'm looking forward to looking at it again. I think both were in the 90s. I think that's the same for me. So I'm really excited about it. That's going to be our next one. And once again, please do send us your suggestions and all those different places that we mentioned before. Oh, I forgot to also forgot to mention, if you would like some stickers, we'd be happy to drop them in the mail for you. Just send us your address at book versus movie podcast at gmail.com. And Margo, where can they find you? You can find me online at coloniabook.com and all of my social media callouts are at She's Not Your Mama. And where can they find you? You can find me at Brooklyn Fitchick for Twitter and Instagram. My site is brooklynfitchick.com. My book is filmed in Brooklyn. You could find it on Amazon. You want to pre-order a copy. That would be amazing. All right. We'll be back soon with a new episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Book vs. Movie Podcast. We are a part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find more podcasts you will love at frolic.media forward slash podcasts. We follow the hashtags LadyPodSquad and Potter and Family. If you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, go to P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and look for Book vs. Movie Podcast. We have a basic Facebook page, but we also have a private Facebook group. Go to Facebook and type in Book VS Movie Podcast Group if you want to join that. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Book vs. Movie. Spell all those words out. If you'd like to send us an email, it's Book vs. Movie Podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. You can follow Margo D at Brooklyn Fit Chick on social media and Margo P at She's Nacho Mama. Thanks so much again for checking out our show, and we'll be back soon with a new episode.